The Red Lantern is a dog sledding narrative survival game that features roguelite elements, which keep you on your toes by randomizing what you encounter each time you start a run. You play as the Musher, a San Francisco native who left the city life behind with only a van and their dog Chomper to pursue their dream of becoming Solid Snake. When did you become a dog musher? Right now my 50 huskies are my only family, I've got to take care of them. Or an Alaskan dog sledder who lives off the land. The goal of the game is to survive a treacherous journey across this valley to reach the musher's new home, but you'll quickly find that nature can be as cruel as it is beautiful, and embarking on a quest like this underprepared is a good way to get yourself killed. <laughs> the introduction has you making stops at animal shelters, one by one, to select members of your sledding team. They play out in short vignettes where the musher observes the animal's personality and gives you a sense of what to expect in regards to how they may or may not be helpful on your journey. After I finally beat the game, I went and started over to pick a completely different crew of dogs, and the ways that they could and couldn't help me in comparison to the original crew did shake up how the game worked. Each dog in your squad has its own arc to complete along the way, which is based on their wants and needs. And when you have completed one, a sticker of the dog gets added to your journal. Speaking of the journal, this is how the game tracks your progression. In it, you'll find multiple pages of goals and side quests to find and achieve, like learning to speak squirrel. Since I can't speak squirrel with my mouth, I'll try with my eyes and wink. Did I just say that out loud? You are really starting to lose yourself out here. Okay, what do we have here? A bullet? Completing these tasks fills the journal with the lessons you've learned, permanently unlocking extra supplies to start your runs with going forward. Every time you fail a run, the game respawns you back in the van before you left to start the quest. And it does this clever thing of recontextualizing the run that you just made as a bad dream that informs the musher on the supplies that they should add, giving you a much better chance of getting further the next time. Along with these upgrades, you'll eventually stumble upon one of several tools randomly abandoned in the wild. These are also permanent additions to your loadout and total lifesavers in helping you survive. But you earn these after playing a whole lot and making it further than ever before, so I think it's kind of balanced in that regard. Like I mentioned, the Red Lantern is a roguelite, and that means you'll be taking a stab at reaching the goal, knowing full well that you probably won't be making it for a good while. Instead, your initial set of attempts will be spent unlocking upgrades and gaining knowledge of how everything works. The game periodically asks you to decide whether to turn left or right along a path, which nudges your sled up or down on the map respectively. This lets you be a little bit more strategic. Let's say you want to aim for a specific landmark or area that you'd like to explore. After each fork in the road, you'll be prompted with encounters that you can either choose to engage with or ignore and keep pushing forward. These are necessary stops if you want to make it the whole way, since they are where you'll be able to gather food, supplies, and complete the objectives in your journal. But stopping also comes at the cost of a blip of your hunger meter, aka your health bar. You'll need to consistently take stock of how everyone is doing and how many resources you have left on hand. For example, running out of bullets means that you're going to have a very hard time getting more food, and running out of food means that, well, you starve. Without birch wood, you won't be able to start a fire, and without health packs, you can't heal wounds. There is a risk-reward element to stopping for an encounter, and with some experience, you'll gain a better understanding of what to expect from each before making a decision on whether or not you want to go for it. It's almost like you're getting better at this whole outdoorsy survival thing. Look out! Stay back! Stay away from them! Your pack of dogs also have their own life meter, which depletes as you pass these trail markers. If you find yourself with an empty tank on either of these meters, that's the end of your run. Pressing X at any time will have you pull over and set up camp, giving you an opportunity to warm up, eat some food, and spend some quality time with your fur babies. In regards to actual gameplay, the mechanics are really simple. You really only need to select actions that you'd like to take from a menu and then watch them play out, while using the right stick to observe your environment in the meantime. Aside from a timing-based shooting minigame where you need to wait for moving cursors to line up before pulling the trigger, and of course fishing, which requires that you keep a lure in the zone until you catch something. While I know that it sounds like this game might be too on rails to be all that enjoyable, I really do think that keeping it simple greatly benefited the experience. 
I often equate narrative-driven titles like the Telltale games as choose-your-own-adventure books in video game form, but honestly, the actual gameplay between the decision-making is serviceable at best, and what you're really there for is to be put in interesting situations and make choices to see how it all plays out. The Red Lantern distills its gameplay into just the decision-making, and in my opinion, it's all the better for it. The heart of this game shines through in the Musher's dialogue, provided by Ashley Birch, who carries this game on her shoulders. I didn't expect to talk out loud this much, but we're really doing this. We're, I, I mean, I, I'm becoming a Musher, like a real one. I think Margot would be proud. I still can't believe she gave us her old cabin and, and gear. We're making progress. We should be there soon enough. Unlike a lot of other multi-platform titles that I've reviewed, The Red Lantern looks really great on the Switch, and while I'm sure that there were visual downgrades here and there to get it running smoothly, the art direction is so strong that any sacrifices the devs may have had to make go mostly unnoticed. That being said, this game can be a little bit rough around the edges. I experienced some weird graphical errors every now and then, like the dogs riding straight through a piece of geometry, and at times, the seam between sections of the game were clearly visible along the ground and the dog's startup animation is almost always a little awkward, with them moving before actually walking. Unfortunately, I also ran into issues where the game either refused to accept my inputs, forcing me to quit out, or the software crashed entirely. Luckily, this game is constantly auto-saving though, so I never lost too much progress either way. It's just a wrinkle that I hope gets ironed out soon. The Red Lantern is unlike anything I've ever played. As you spend more and more time with it, you'll grow attached to your crew of super cute puppies and begin to understand each of their unique quirks. This game created situations where I really did feel the pressure of trying to keep myself and the gang alive against all odds. This story about a bold, adventurous leap into the unknown in order to find yourself is something that I really connected with, and I hope that other players will find it as engaging as I did. Could there be wolves in there? Wolf dogs. Half wolf, half husky. How do you know so much? I ride dog sleds. I'm a musher. 